I'm Connor Old, and welcome back to another episode of Old's Oscar Countdown. And this week, we're going to be looking at a very interesting race, the, one of my favorite races every year, the Best Supporting Actor category. But if you're new to the series, what we do every single week is I break down a different Oscar category, and I talk about what I think is going to get nominated. Then once the nominations come out, I think with what I think is going to win. But I just sort of cover this entire Oscar race. As we sort of get more and past the big, broad categories, I might be doing some split episodes. Um, like I said, and I do every single week at the top of the show, I talk about movies that are rising and falling and maybe update my predictions to keep sort of the main uh, relevant sort of categories, I guess you would say, more popular categories um, up at front and talk about the more the more interesting races than some of the ones that are hard to predict than, you know, say, animated short and whatnot. But I'll be sort of grouping those together. I will be covering all Oscar categories. Don't forget, you know, this is still a f com full, complete, comprehensive Oscar guide. Uh, that being said, these uh, uh, sort of predictions right now may change. I may update them. I will do sort of a, a final update when uh the uh, before the, you know a couple days before the oscar nominations are announced to see how i do um, so that should be really exciting but as of right now i got a pretty good list for best supporting actor i feel confident about this category um it's always that last slot where you never know what's going to get in you know it's always fun to speculate right now oh what's going to win which is you know it's kind of the second question to me because i'm trying to get all those nominations correct to help you guys out and try to assess the oscars race i'm also trying to create a great film community here so comment below let me know some of your picks too um, like I said, we go through some movies that are rising and falling. Uh, a couple of movies I think are rising, um, one of them being Black Klansman. Um, I've been pretty low on the film throughout the sort of Oscar race because it hasn't been proven at all. It's, you know, uh, an appreciated sort of movie, uh, pretty, did pretty well at the box office, um, a critical success, but it was released in August. And we see a lot of these times, it's hard to sort of be reminded, oh, this movie's, you know, it's almost came out too early. If it came out in the festival run, I, I'd understand that, but it, it came out too early. So I'm not sure if people have forgotten it yet, but as it's coming out on Blu-ray now and, and streaming sites, um, sort of being able to rent, um, we see more and more people um, who are actually sort of, they're, they're going out, they're doing interviews, they're sort of talking about the film, seeing it again, re-watching it. So it's these little things, I think, they're, they're putting enough effort into sort of making this an, an Oscar campaign um, to get those nominations. Um, that being said, someone like Adam Driver in this category is not in there. John David Washington's not my best actor. Um, uh, category, Spike Lee for directing, um, maybe, but the thing is, is sort of, he has some stigmas against him. I think he's only been nominated for writing um, and maybe documentary. Um, so I think there's sort of the stigma maybe against him. So the, it's, there's sort of a lot of things going against Black Klansman, which leads me to be sort of still hesitant and still waiting to see if sort of the critics groups pick it up or even the Globes um, to sort of put them in my Oscar predictions. Um, that being said, it is rising at least more in my estimation. Another movie that's rising is Black Panther. Uh, this is a movie that, you know, uh, before in the original video, I think, you know, I said, I think give it eight or nine, sort of just slipping in there because superhero movies, you never know how they're going to do. Um, but it, this movie is very similar to last year's Get Out. Get, of course, Get Out came out in March of that year, so it was almost a full year to the Oscars of when Get Out came out. Black Panther is going to be the same thing. It came out in February of 2018. Um, the two films um, focus on, um, they're both genre films. Uh, they both um, focus on um, African American African American leads. Um, Get Out is more, say, political than sort of Black Panther, but the similarity between Black Panther and Get Out is that um, the villain, Michael B. Jordan in Black Panther, talks directly about sort of race in America and social issues, which sort of, in a sense, did the same thing with Get Out, which sort of talked about those similar things in a way, for the Oscars at least, elevate their, it past their genre status. So I think Black Panther's actually gone for a movie, at least in my estimation, from like a nine or a 10, sort of just getting in, to actually more of a series contender. Um, as of right now, I don't think it's going to win, but that that doesn't mean it doesn't have a good shot at getting a nomination, and potentially even a spoiler for someone like Ryan Coogler for directing. Stay tuned for next week to see my picks. About that, I may include them, I may not. Stay tuned. Um, and then following, uh, you know, we talk about sort of ones that I've been following, maybe First Man, but uh, The Mule, I think, has sort of been touted over and over again that it's not an Oscar play, it is a commercial movie, so 
I don't think we could see a late uh, surge from that. The only movie that we could see a late surge from is being Vice, which I believe people are seeing this weekend critics. So we'll be able to get sort of an update and you know check sort of online for different uh, po- uh, you know updates and um, so you, therefore you can change your Oscar predictions based on sort of how the initial reception is and, and the buzz around it, which uh, consists so much of the Oscar season. Um, but without further ado, let's jump into what I think uh, is going to get nominated for sure, and right now I think it's going to win. Uh, Marsha Ali for a Green Book. This is a guy who, like Sally Field said, you know, when they like you, they really like you. Um, he won two years ago for Moonlight, and for, for me, there's a, uh, sort of two things that really solidify this pick as the sort of front runner. That being experience and momentum. The experience part being that two years ago he won for Moonlight. He was a sort of a relatively unknown actor for a lot of people, sort of a, one that you've seen around in House of Cards and things like that, but really sort of broke onto the scene and delivered an Oscar release performance clearly in, in Moonlight. Um, and one of the highlights of that movie, which went up to you know win Best Picture, of course. So he really understands the campaigning thing. He understands how to win an Oscar. Um, actually, how evident that was is that at the beginning of the season, we were, were not sure which of the three women from the favorite would be in lead or supporting, and there was sort of a bit of a confusion there. But Green Book, there was never a confusion. And Hershaw Ali himself, actually, if I remember correctly, said, no, I'm going to be supporting. He put himself in supporting. So him and the people behind him understand the Oscar race. They understand that you have to clearly make it like, okay, you can't do co- two co-leads that's going to cannibalize each other. You have to make one supporting, one lead. Herschel said, you know, I think I should do supporting. Um, you know, sometimes a lot of actors have ego, and they say, no, I'm the lead of the movie, you know? So they may uh, want to sort of com- compete despite the Oscar, but he's, he's smart, he understands the campaign, he understands Oscar buzz, and he understands his best chances to win, and that being um, uh, best supporting actor. Um, and then another sort of... Uh, I talked about experience, all the things, momentum, the movie itself, um, Green Book is doing very well, it's rising very fast, it's one of my front runners for best picture, not the front runner just yet, but it's up there for sure, and um, you always, if it is sort of a serious contender, uh, best picture contender as I think, you have to have uh, an, an Oscar um, to go with it, you know, Shape of Water last year um, had, you know, sort of the surprise was that it only it had you know the director would be the big prize and the year before that it would be sort of um, screenplay and um, uh, the supporting actor for Mahershala so there's always either an acting war that goes with the best picture or directing a lot of times directing and, and picture split um, but I'm looking at sort of Green Book's chances and if I do think it's a strong contender I don't think it's going to win for best director I don't think it's going to win for best screenplay or editing um, it could win for maybe one of the tech categories but not a big category so the big category that I think it could win is either Viggo Mortensen for best actor or Mahershala Ali for best supporting actor the difference being Viggo Mortensen is going up against big heavyweights guys like Christian Bale um, and Bradley Cooper o- Oscar favorites um, versus someone like Mahershala Ali who's going up against you know recent Oscar favorites I guess you would say um, and people who are in movies that are less popular so right now I think Mahershala Ali has a really good chance at winning this category which would it, therefore sort of solidify Green Book's chances as a best picture spoiler um, so a lot going for Mahershala Ali I think um, he's going to get in for sure uh, the next pick boom Richard E. Grant um, Every video I've been saying that I think, can you ever forgive me as a real Oscar dark horse? If people, if the majority of people have him in, and Liz McCarthy in, and maybe he's in for best um, uh, adapted screenplay, um, I think a lot, um, it therefore will at least get a best picture nomination, if not sort of make it a serious contender because it's in these serious categories. Um, and I've seen the movie, so which really helped me understand and sort of judge his performance. And this is one that I'm very confident in because it's a typical Oscar performance. He is the sort of um, coy, charming, yet tricky, sort of deceptive character. He is both good and bad. His ethics and morals are sort of questionable um, because he's a real character. But his real uh, chemistry with Melissa McCarthy is undeniable. They're, they're sort of back and forth. It's so much fun. Um, he's so charming. He always has the right things. You, you kind of want to be around him because he is kind of the, the bad boy and he sort of even it, it mentions that a couple times. So 
He's kind of this uh, you know, figure that's working on the outskirts of society that meets together with another uh, outsider loner, and they sort of you know work together. And it's a fun movie, and he does an incredible performance. And I think if you like the movie, you really like Richard E. Grant. And even if you don't like the movie, the performances are what stand out to you. And he really just has such great funny lines, exudes personally, you know, exudes that sort of, um, uh, you know, just charm, which we see a lot in this Best Supporting Actor category. I mean, Heath Ledger for The Joker, even Christian Bale for The Fighter, um, Christoph Waltz in both his Quentin Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino movies, and Glorious Bastards, um, and uh, Django Unchained, sort of the sort of, um, I know Tom O'Neill or Rick Old Derby calls it a winking devil. I think it's a good sort of description because you know you're on their side um, because of their charm, because of their personality, but you know that you know they could sort of stab you in the back at any time. So it has that sort of great back and forth, um, and, and I think the best supporting actor category really loves to reward these type of performances. So this is a performance that the Oscars love to reward. But speaking of a performance the Oscars love to reward, boom, Timothy Chalamet for Beautiful Boy. And then he performs this sort of performance of um, the uh, you know, actor ravaged by drug addiction. Think Jeff Bridges in Crazy Heart, or like I said, Christian Bale in The Fighter. Um, People who some sort of substance abuse, alcoholic or you know, crack, in, in this case being um, crystal meth. Um, sort of ravage their life and the home life and we see sort of the, the effects of it and I think Timothy Chalamet does an amazing job in this movie. I have also seen this movie and even from the critics who were maybe more in my boat where they enjoyed Call Me By Your Name but maybe didn't get um, Timothy Chalamet's great performance, uh, really see his the, bright, the strength of his acting now. It's his second performance almost of like, oh no, this guy's serious, this guy's very good, this guy's a, a serious, you know, breakthrough actor. And for him to actually get nominated and almost win against Gary Oldman, f being his young age, I mean, that sort of defies so many of the Oscar stereotypes. Leonardo DiCaprio had to wait till he's 40. Ryan Gosling's might not ever get one. He might have to wait till he's, you know, 40 as well, 45. I don't know how old, old Ryan Gosling is, but he sort of has that baby face. So to have sort of a baby face, a new actor, um, the homeless one for a lead is almost very unheard of. So I think the actors really like him as this new breakout potential candidate. And as such, I think, even though Beautiful Boy, this the, the drawback is this will be probably his only nomination. Um, that being said, I think he will get nominated because this the acting categories is something we see, you know, that doesn't happen, you know, rarely. It happens kind of quite often. And we see someone like Viggo Mortensen for Captain Fantastic, that film being the only nomination in a lead acting sort of role. You know, first reform could get only one nomination this year. Um, Still Alice with Julianne Moore won with only one nomination. So there's these movies that, especially in the acting categories, that will, you know, maybe you didn't like the movie, but you really liked um, the performance. So you're going to give them, and they sort of recognize that, especially someone like the actor's branch, who is the largest branch. So I think his performance is so strong in a movie that is still sort of in the Oscar contention and is in the Oscar sort of um, relevancy that. I do think he will be able um, to sneak in there um, because he has an amazing performance with a performance that they kind of like, that sort of substance abuse ravage sort of transformation, um, maybe more flashy than someone like Steve Carell. Um, and we see this sort of often in the acting category. So the drawback isn't maybe as big as you may think. Next pick is Sam Elliott in A Star Is Born. Uh, this has a lot to do with um, mostly the movie and sort of all these little things that kind of come into the right place for Sam Elliott. Um, like I said, the movie has done very well at the box office. It's one of the Oscar frontrunners right now. It's critically acclaimed. People really enjoy it. Audiences and critics alike. Um, so it's going to get a lot, of, a lot of nominations, and I think Sam Elliott will sort of uh, ride that wave. I say that just because he's been a veteran actor um, and sort of known for playing these grizzled veterans for so long since, you know, Roadhouse even um, in 89. So I think He's, he's one of these guys where you've worked with him before, maybe in a small capacity, but you have worked with him because he's been around for so long. Um, that being said, he's not one of those guys where, oh, he has to have that win. Sam Elliott, he's one of those guys. It's one of those where, you know, give him a nomination. He's never had a nomination before. He deserves this. This is what he does, you know, best in a quote-unquote prestige movie, sort of one that's an Oscar contender. Um, he does a great job. I wish there was sort of maybe more scenes him to have those Oscar speeches. I mean, the ones before, I know those they they have those Oscar speeches, and I can tell that one's going to be the clip. That one's going to be the clip. This one, you can tell there's one clip where it's like, okay, that's it. That's sort of his, oh, he's going to get nominated a moment. But I wish there was maybe more because it's only 
there for a little bit to moment with his brother. It's only there for a little bit. And then um, um, there's only one of them. So, and it's not really played up or anything as an Oscar moment because, you know, they don't try to do that, obviously. But I do think that he's going to get nominated despite it being sort of not as big of a role as maybe people think. But I think as of right now, the Star Wars is the front, a front runner. So it's going to sort of uh, propel Sam Elliott into the nominations um, because of his sort of veteran status, because of the movie's doing really well, and they want to reward him with that nomination. Plus, he's also, he is good in the movie. Um, and my final pick, maybe surprising, Michael B. Jordan for Black Panther. I talked about Black Panther as a serious contender, as being maybe arguably one of the top five best picture contenders to actually win because of the uh, preferential ballot. So if it were to win, similarly to Green Book, it has to get at least a nomination. Um, and that, that I think the most likely is Michael B. Jordan for Black Panther. His uh, element of the movie, which I talked about before, is that sort of social issue, is bringing sort of the American race perspective into Wakanda and sort of challenging that and challenging the American box office, and the American public, excuse me, because at the American box office, it made over $700 million. So it was a huge cultural phenomenon in the States in particular because it, it really, it, you know, touched on this topic of race um, into a superhero movie, which maybe um, elevated the genre. And his re and Michael B. Jordan's character is the reason why people maybe it, it, it responded more to it. Um, he's sort of a, a great villain, one of the best MCU villains, um, which maybe is in a high esteem. But recently, he you know they've been up there for sure. Uh, he has a great motive, um, and I think the standout for a lot of people is Michael B. Jordan. Plus, he has Creed two coming out, so he's going to be on doing press. He's going to be reminding people if that movie does well at the box office, which I think it will, it should, as long as it's you know decently um, critically respected, it won't hurt his chances. I actually, think it will help his chances because he'll be out there. He'll work that charm that Michael B. Jordan has. I think actually pretty confidently in Michael B. Jordan getting in for Black Panther. You never know with some of these outside picks with more people that they really like because he hasn't been nominated yet. Um, but I think because of sort of the chances that Black Panther is going to get nominated, if it's going to, if it's going to get nominated for any of the best acting categories, I think Michael B. Jordan gets in there. Plus, I mean, Heath Ledger for The Joker, they're not opposed to doing the Best Supporting Actor nomination for a villain in a superhero movie. Um, some honorable mentions here. Um, we talked about Adam Driver. We talked about Black Klansman. Adam Driver could sneak in there if the film sort of is more of a contender, as uh, as I think. But right now, it's not going to get in here. I have Sam Rockwell here. It's really Sam Rock Sam Rockwell slash Steve Carell for Vice. I don't know which one's going to be sort of more prevalent or has more of a role. I think Sam Rockwell's only going to have a, a, a small role, so he may not get nominated. But he just got he just won last year, so the Oscar is very high on him. Someone like Steve Carell as well, they've always been very high on. So those are sort of the big heavyweights in the movie we haven't seen yet, so we don't know the chances of Vice. Um, uh, and then we have here Russell Hornsby in um, The Hate You Give, which is a movie that um, has been sort of well, well received, but I just don't think it's maybe an Oscar contender. It could surprise us and get it in, and if anyone were to get it in, I think it's going to be Russell Hornsby because I've heard great things from, from his performance. And then Dale Kaluuya here for Widows. Um, uh, he has sort of, um, you know, last, uh, last year with Get Out, um, he was well respected and well liked and, you know, got in, which is sort of a late sort of surprise win um, for a lot of people. Not for me. I, I did predict him, I believe, um, but I didn't have him in my predictions for quite a while because I, was, I wasn't sure because his performance wasn't that flashy and Get Out was a horror movie. So clearly they like him. Um, so that's the thing with sort of maybe Sam Rockwell or uh, Dan Kaluuya. It's like they like him. They, you know like his performance and I just right now I don't believe in Widows I don't even think Viola Davis is going to get in here that's kind of my hot take you know there's movies that you like and movies that you don't like Widows is one that I think maybe will just slip under the radar because um, you know I think right now it hasn't come out yet but maybe a poor box office um, is out there and there's maybe not a, a total complete critical love some people that I've heard um, uh, some of my maybe personal critics didn't really enjoy the movie and thought it, it missed in some scenarios which which is unfortunate but if it's as much as a critical play Steve McQueen could could get in for director, it could get in for picture, could you could get in for best supporting actor, Viola Davis could get in for best actress, but as of right now, I have none of that just because the strength of the film is uh, uncertain to me, I guess you would say. Uh, plus, it's a commercial film, so you know, it's not sort of maybe even eyeing for that. So that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure you comment below. Let me know some of your picks. Stay tuned for next week for Best Director, which is an interesting race because the the, the uh, leader is clear, but after that, it's all over the place. You don't know what's going to get in. It's like that for every year for directing. Should be a lot of fun. Until that, uh, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Until next time.
stay tuned.